Hi, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Uh, I'm just taking a quick look at the copper coin that was exposed to the pure Amasa gas flame and then pushed into a piece of PTFE. And the PTFE, I guess, is a fair bit thinner than the coin, but uh, similar sort of uh, thickness. The coin is quite a bit thicker, though. Um, Anyway, so let's have a look at the properties of the materials. So here on P-table, I am looking at the thermal conductivity of uh, copper. And you can see that it is by far the most conductive element uh, other than silver, which is just a uh, less than 10% more conductive than copper. Uh, so this should, if it gets warm extremely quickly, uh, um, move that uh, thermal heat around. Using P-table again, here is copper's melting point, and so that's in Kelvin, 1357, so that's just over 1080 or something centigrade. Uh, so we can see that is uh, quite a warm temperature, um, but Dr. Eagley suggested this because obviously it was lower by some considerable margin than either titanium or uh, at tungsten, but we were pushing titanium into the PTFE, so he suggested using something that was uh, a little lower melting point. Now this is the melting point of polytetrafluoroethylene at 326.8 degrees C, so a very much uh, lower melting point than um, the copper, however it also has a very uh, much lower uh, thermal conductivity of 0.25 watts uh, per mk and going back to the thermal conductivity of copper it has 400 watts uh, per mk so uh, 0.25 as opposed to 400 so that's like four times it's, it's 1600 times better at conducting uh, heat uh, than uh, uh, PTFE okay. Okay, all right, let's see if we can melt through this. I'm a bit scared we're gonna have another fusion event here. I really should have gloves on or something. Okay. So here is the microscope image of the affected edge of the coin. And something that really, really struck out to me um, very, very clearly. The first is that this is the uh, piece of the coin that was uh, squashed into the PTFE. And you see it's uh, like plastically deformed, but it's kind of like a slightly malleable, mushy rubber sheet. Because you can see that the, the number one is actually, it's, it's still got the displacement it has down here. It's slightly softened a bit, but it, it's moved over and kind of been displaced up. But that's not the really curious thing for me, is, is that it has this kind of really strong circular boundary here. There's a little bit of fall off, and this is the plasticized area here. So there's a plasticized area here, and then there is a little bit of a boundary here, and then there's this kind of hard line. But this isn't even as interesting as what you're seeing over here. Look at this. There is a very hard line here, running around here, okay? Very, very hard line in which the, there seems to be this plastic deformation area and then it's basically not touched at all. Now, if this was melting, melting, I don't know. I would have suggested that the, the fall off would be very smooth. You wouldn't get this incredibly hard line with something that's nearly the most con thermally conductive element there is by far. Um, and then the very interesting thing, even more than that, is this hole. This hole is like, it's almost like the material completely disappeared and it's cut. You can see the uh, structure of the, um, uh, sort of the original sort of pressing, pressing of the coin uh, with these leaves coming here and they just get to this point and it stops. They're just cut out. Um, I don't know, I would have imagined if this was hot enough to basically remove this bit of the coin, um, that, that there would be some kind of change in the form at the point that this, this is basically chopped off. It's like, 
it's literally cut it. And, and the interesting thing is that this area goes round and it follows this line all the way around here. And this is the, the, the plasticized area. Um, very interesting. Uh, I, you know, maybe people can find examples of where copper does this and it, it, it's rubberized here and the, in this area with this strong demarcation line. But over here, it basically <laughs> disappeared. It absolutely disappeared. Now, uh, last image I'll show you here is where you can see the comparison between uh, what happened to the um, uh, copper uh, in comparison to the piece of the PTFE that was displaced. Now, I will say that the PTFE is uh, a fair bit thinner, but not much, much thinner. Um, but uh, as this was like 90 degrees and coming down and pushing down on this, um, it, it kind of removed this. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't look like, um, you know, the, the, the material that was here is like bulging out. It's just basically gone. I mean, it, it's vaporized or it's gone. It's, you know, there's a, there's a cut line and it's not there anymore and it's not deposited on here. Um, but uh, the interesting thing is, is that the pressure, if you follow this line around here, seems to have almost displaced this copper, which is a very much higher temperature, as, as much as the material has been eaten out of here. I don't know how much you can read into that. But um, the more interesting thing I, I'm thinking that I'm seeing here than, than the actual interplay between the two, this is so much being so much hotter uh, than this, um, is this, it's just this, the fact that you have this hard, hard line in this circle here, hard line, where it's like plastic on one side and, um, you know, not plastic and so on, but even where it's plastic, it keeps the embossing over the surface. You know, maybe this is how copper works, you know, I don't know. Um, but. It is increasingly bizarre where you just have this literally cut here. I mean, it's like this is not molten even slightly or, you know, uh, perhaps, you know, I'm just n naive. Um, I'd like some people that have worked with copper maybe uh, before that can tell me that, you know, copper being the second by far the most thermally conductive element there is, it has an extremely hard line between where it's, you know, soft enough to be moved and, and, and not soft enough. Maybe, maybe that's how it works. But why would it disappear here? I mean, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe this melted and it just kind of like accumulated over here. Maybe that's what's going on. So get your thinking caps on. Um, but uh, th there it is. And, it, you know, was this, was this removed or did it come over here? Be interesting to get another one of these coins. Perhaps I have one. And, and measure the weight of this this coin and the other coin and see actually how much mass was lost. So um, get your thinking caps on. Is this how copper normally behaves? You know, eh, I guess I could get another uh, piece of copper and uh, uh, heat it up with a normal gas jet and see what happens when I get it to a point that it's, uh, you know, glowing or plastic and or at least glowing uh, and then try and push it into the PTFE again and see what see what happens with a normal gas jet and then look at it again under the microscope and see if we see a very very hard line where it's there and it's not there. Is this the normal way that copper behaves? Uh, let me know um, or is there anything interesting going on here? Uh, in a later video I will go in closer to see and uh, reveal if there's any other interesting things going on. Thank you for your time.